somewhere. And uh, thank you all for coming. Okay, it's funny, when, when you get invited to speak at an event like this, you often wonder who's going to come and listen. But, but there's a lot of you, so I'm really looking forward to it. We've got a great story to tell. Um, as, as Aaron's mentioned, I now work for Stanley Black & Decker. I'm sure all of you are very familiar with our tools. You, you know, you think about a screwdriver, a hammer, and, and there's somebody here. Raise your hand if you're thinking, what are you going to do with the connected screwdriver? So, <laughs> yeah, okay, I knew there was at least one. Or your drill is the, is the other favorite one, right? But Stanley's got a lot more than tools, right? But beyond the tools, um, beyond the Black & Decker brand, we have the DeWalt, the Bostitch, um, Irwin, pretty much all the brands that you would think of if you think about tools. But we've also got... Um, a company that builds oil and gas pipelines, right? We've got two, health, uh, two security companies, Security North America and Security Europe for your traditional intrusion monitoring, smoke and fire, things like that. Um, we have a healthcare division where we tag little newborn babies with um, an active RFID tag so we can track them in the hospital so we know where they are and we can sound alarms if they leave. Um, we've also got this other really cool um, company called Cribmaster, which is using RFID and vending machines so that people can check out and check in their tools and, we, and uh, the assets are managed, everyone knows where it is, inventory is maintained, things like that. And uh, yet another uh, real-time tra tra uh, location tracking, sorry about that, um, view technologies where we can light up an RFID tag from about 150 feet away and track it in three-dimensional space. So Stanley Right? This, this 170, 173 year old company that everyone thinks of as tools is really, really in the best uh, position to bring industrial IoT to the consumer and to, to, to our industries. Um, and we, you know, we've got some amazing leadership. They recognized about two years ago that the next big disruption that our, that our industry is going to face was digital uh, in disruptions. So they launched the group I work in, which is the Digital Accelerator. And our task is to bring um, digital excellence to the, to, across the business units, uh, and largely focused around IoT. So before I go too far, let me ask you what, let me talk a little bit about just my immediate background and where I came from before I joined Stanley, because I think it's relevant to this discussion. I worked for, uh, prior to joining Stanley, I worked for AT&T, AT&T Digital Life specifically, which is... Um, I tell people it's a, it's a first-class IoT platform. It really is, right? It's all built in-house. We built it. I was one of the lead architects on the, on the project. It's marketed as a home automation and a home security platform, right? So it's, it really is an IoT, first-class IoT system. So when I, when I joined Stanley Black & Decker, I had two goals, right? They said, you've got two, two simple tasks. We want you to first either build or buy an IoT platform, right? And then we want you to drive adoption of that platform. And let me tell you, neither one of those are easy, right? So um, my first week out, uh, I had to fly out and meet with the representatives from the different business units, right? After, after talking to about seven or eight different groups, I realized there's no way we're going to build one platform internally that can support all these companies, all these companies, all these different user needs. We were going to definitely have to partner with somebody who already had it and had enough... Um, enough of the key components there that can satisfy everybody, but wasn't siloed in one particular area. So it had to be something that had a very broad coverage. And then driving adoption. I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So then I went off and I met with the different business units again after talking to them. And I said, okay, this, you know, you guys have asked for an IoT platform. Here's a rough drawing of what an IoT platform is. And there's a couple different areas. There's that M to M layer, Right, that we've been doing for 20 years. Just, uh, you know, I hope I don't offend anyone. Right, there's, there's, we, we've been connecting sensors to things for a long time. That's, that's not what's sexy about IoT, right? Um, then there's the cloud services, right? Um, the, where everything now connects. It's, I, I refer to it as the I in IoT. And then we have the app enablement here. I, I sometimes refer to it as the app development platform. The areas that I focus on, the areas that I, that I concern myself with are these, the, the, the one in the middle is the primary concern, and the one on the left here, the app development environment, is the, is the, the other. And uh, you know, I'll just tell you why I focus on those two things um, most, most importantly now. Um, 
it goes to that second bullet, that second task that they gave me to do when I joined Stanley Black & Decker, right, which was to drive adoption. So that wasn't the only thing they told me. They said, hey, we want you to drive adoption once you get people on this platform, and we're going to measure your success by the number of people you have on this platform. And we're not going to give you a stick or a taser to go get people to do this. You're going to have to persuade them. So in order for me to get people on there, it had to be easy. Right? That's the thing to keep in mind. And this is the tier that had to be easy. That other tier had to be, that center tier had to be reliable and, and enable quick connect, connectivity to it. So that's why those are the two places I was most concerned with. This is a platform. So some of this I may have already talked a little bit about, right? But as, as a guy who'd come out, come out of AT&T where we'd already built a platform and already gone through some of the scenarios, I had a lot of ideas what we could do wrong, right? Because um, what's really cool is I get to say I did it wrong at least once, probably twice. Um, and I may be able to do it wrong again, I'm not sure. But the, uh, you know, we, we needed to make sure that our deployments were not just cloud-centric, right? They had to be able to work on-premise. I talk a lot about the edge when I'm in the office. I said, listen, listen, we, the, the, the internet and the IoT, the internet is important, but if, this, but if the internet goes down, if you're in an environment where, the, where your, your connectivity is lost, your system still needs to function. If it's, you know, because I came from digital life, I would talk about a security system. If, you, if you're bringing security or some kind of life safety aspects to a particular location and the internet goes down, you can't tell people it's okay if, you know, you step into an unsafe area and get hit by a bus, right? You still need to be able to, to your system still needs to work. Um, but, it need, but you need the redundancy and the, and the, the, um, the value that the cloud brings, for sure. Security. There is no way, no way that I wanted to go to work and worry about them guys coming in and saying, hey, somebody hacked our battery. And you're the guy responsible for protecting it. So whatever we came up with, whatever platform we put in place, had to have world-class security. Not necessarily just for the battery, but for, and as we talk, talk through it, you'll understand why security is such an important aspect to it. Um, the integration with devices. Enterprise software, legacy standards and protocols. I bet you there's a lot of us here. You know, if we were, if, if one of you guys were to ask, or if I were to ask you, how do you define the, the IoT or the Internet of Things, there's probably as many of you here as there are, will be different definitions. This integrates with, the way I define the IoT is the Internet of Things is the interactions of people, places, and things at a particular moment in time, right? So it's all, every, every, everything is, uh, every piece of data is a thing. So if it's SAP or something else sitting in the background, if it's your, your inventory in a retail shop, if it's um, an email or a tweet, potentially, right? It's all a thing that goes into the system and, and, and uh, illustrates or not illustrates, informs the system as to what's available and helps to make decisions. And then development focused. In order to, to, to really build a, sim, a solution that is so easy that people will go and adopt it quickly without being able to, to hold, them, hold them to it or, or entice them in some way is, again, the most important aspect of, uh, I gotta go down, of the solution. So, how do you do it, right? How do you pick an IoT company? When I, did, when, I, when I started 16 months ago, there were, I think one of the analysts from, if anyone's here from ABI Research, I think one of the analysts said there were 230 different IoT platform providers out there at the time. Today, there's over 400 companies that identify as an IoT platform. So how do you pick them? Well, you could go off and talk to a bunch of people, right? We did. And this, this slide sort of ref, uh, represents a small portion of the folks we talked to. These are the ones we, we, that I at least talked to more than once. Um, but it, it's not enough, right? You can't possibly make a decision to satisfy all those needs for a business the size of Stanley that, that just by talking to somebody. So we identified these five companies that we, we, and we put them through a hands-on evaluation. We brought them in. And, and this, is the, this is the part I like to tell people is the most important part of my, 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 my job, really, was we brought in these five, these five groups where we could stand up our own instance 
we did. We would de deploy it into a cloud instance where we couldn't, if it was a platform as a service, we would just gain access to their service. And then I simply built the same set of applications five times. I would build an application that would pump data in to each one of these platforms, and I would build the end application on the, outs on the uh, application tier five times. And that's a little bit of a fib because not all these, um, some of the platforms got disqualified before I, before I got to all five, so I didn't have to do it, but that was the goal, for sure. The initial outcomes. What I'm gonna talk about with respect to the outcomes is really just the speed that our developers and our business units were able to, to, to move, right? Um, we've got, I think I told you, we've got our um, Tool Connect battery, our connected battery. That was there before I got there, right? And it took about two and a half years to get the application to control that battery out to the market. You know, because everything was written from scratch and they didn't leverage an IoT platform. In fact, they didn't even have one, right? When I got there, the guy said to me, he says, I don't know anything about this IoT, I just want a database in the cloud. And I said, well, okay, that, that, but how long did it take you to do that with just a database in the cloud? And he said, well, again, two and a half years. We've since then, by, by leveraging the platform that we bought, which is um, from Aaron's company, Clearblade, we were able to go now in, in a matter of months to market, right? So we go from concept to, to, a, to an app in the app store for a St. Android or an iOS app in a matter of months. Um, our, our smart tech, which is the Black & Decker branded tool, which you could download from the app store today, that was about four and a half months from start to stop. Um, and that's in uh, direct comparison to the, to the Tool Connect app. So we did put together a scorecard. If you remember, I talked to you about how I went around and met with the different business units and talked about their needs and because we're going to try and select somebody. And the way, to get, the way we whittled it down from the five companies is through the use of this scorecard. And this, you don't see the whole scorecard here, but you can see the, some of the, the pieces there, right? Did it, does the system provide a notification manager, an event management? What kind of logging capabilities does it bring? Is it scalable? Does it provide data streaming? Security is on there, right? The key to, is that each one of these bulleted items are weighted, so um, it, you know, they're not necessarily even, right? So, uh, for instance, security and data streaming is more is weighted more heavily than a notification manager, right? Because you can, it's just not just the way it works. Now, what I should tell you is that I, I wasn't alone in this decision. Right, so I had what was called, I had two organizations that I worked with inside of the Stanley Black & Decker group. I had our tech council, which is an organization of our, of our senior, senior technical leadership from the different business units. I think there's about, I think it's 13 or 14 uh, representatives now from the different organizations. And I would read out to them on a monthly basis, tell them what we're looking at, gather their requirements, and then they would basically keep me within the rails, right? And what was, what's cool about it is, uh, they were also at the top of their organization, so they would go down and they'd tell their, the people who were doing the work, you know, you got to go play with Bill, he's, you know, he's, he's helping us. And then I also created a different group, and I, what I called the IoT Working Group, which was made up of engineers and product managers from those different, same different business units, who, were, who the guys would be responsible for doing the work. And it was between those two groups and, and my previous experience at AT&T that we constructed this particular scorecard and weighted it. So it wasn't my opinion that, um, that alone that drove this card, right? It was made up of the whole organization. Anyway, the other thing to point out is that we, it was pretty tough, right? If, if all you did was meet our expectations on the items that are green, the best you could have scored, if you, if you excelled at everything else, the best you could have scored was like, I think it was a 50. Right? So in order to do well, you had to exceed our expectations in, what, in the areas that we thought were the, the core components of an IoT platform. Um, and so ultimately, we, we selected Clearblade as one of our partners, right? and we use them where we have an edge component, for sure. That is one of the, that, that is their biggest differentiator, is these guys really get it. They understand that the solution has to work even if the internet isn't there. And if it is there, it needs to be reflected up in the cloud. And if there's a hiccup in the middle, whatever happens down on the premise needs to be replicated up in the cloud without any, with, you know, reliably 
and without any extra effort. And, it, and let me tell you, it's simple. This is the, this is the easy, easiest environment to work in. They've done a tremend, tremendous job working on their user experience. Developers can go in there really quickly and build out applications in, in a small fraction of the time. There's, um, I won't, I won't, you know, all the platforms that we evaluated, I, I just wanted to say this because you've, you've seen some of them on the previous slide. All of those platforms are really strong. All of them are really good. It's difficult to, to, to navigate and to, to pick one out of all of them, but when you're trying to satisfy the needs of a company the size of Stanley Black & Decker, it, it's got to be broad coverage. You've got to be able to kind of go out there and, and work. Um, and, and, but these guys really shined. They, they really stood apart from their ability to, to bring compute, the same compute from the cloud to the, to the premise is, is, is really priceless. You can, um, uh, basically you can script their, script their application, script their environment, utilizing um, their rules engine, and you can, you can log into the platform, decide you want the rule to execute at the cloud, and then if you later decided you really wanted it down on one or more of the edges, you could just drag it down to, the, to one or more of the other edges. Pretty quickly, pretty simple, so it's very nimble. So I told you that we were connecting a bunch of our products, right? But that's not the only thing that we did, right? Because we, you know, what do you do once you get a bunch of connected products? And I'm sure some of you are already thinking about this, right? You need to connect the places that you use those products. So if you think about, we sell tools into factories. I told you, factory is one of our biggest customers. Um, so so bringing, in, bringing in a solution that takes those connected tools and ties them together in a way that helps to automate the factory, even if there are our own factories, it brings tremendous value to, the, to, to our company as well as to the companies we sell into. Something you probably didn't realize is next time, and, and you'll, 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 you'll probably see this every day for the rest of your life now, the sliding glass doors that you would walk in and out of when you walk into, say, a Publix or a Kroger or a Walmart, right? If you look, somewhere on that door, somewhere on seven out of the 10 doors you look at will be our Stanley logo, because I think we have 70% market share. So one of the challenges that we have is you know, predictive maintenance, knowing when to roll a truck out, knowing when something needs to be adjusted. So we're connecting our doors so we can collect information and start to reduce our cost in maintaining those doors. We don't have to wait for them to break and for somebody to call us. Now we can just look and see when something's a little bit out of alignment or if the, the motors are getting a little hotter than the others or if things are, there's more friction, opening and closing more slowly. So um, this began back in July of 2015. There was nothing, we didn't have anything. We had a battery that you could control from your Bluetooth phone, and that was it. And today, we've uh, gone through the selection process, stood up the platform, or platforms, and made, made them available. And we've got four IoT solutions either in production or entering productions in, recent mo in, in nearby months. We've got some new services and business models coming out. Some of those I can't talk about, but there's, new, but there's Ultimately, seven new projects that are going to be coming out at the end of, I guess it'll be right around 15 or 16 months. Um, so we've moved really quick in making a decision. We moved really quick in driving adoption. But it, I'm just going to tell you, we couldn't have moved that fast if it weren't for the platform selection that we made. Because there, was, there would have been no way that we could drive the adoption levels to, to the level that we have unless it was as easy as it is. It's, uh, we wouldn't be able to continue to use it if it wasn't as reliable as it is.